A warm welcome and thank you for joining us on this Palm Sunday for this Eucharistic celebration. In order that all may pray without distraction, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. Thank you. The Mass this evening is for Roger O'Gara. Please remember him in your prayers. Our parish mission will be April 24th through the 26th with Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. He is one of the most sought after speakers in the church today. He is a powerful and passionate evangelist and preacher whose no-nonsense approach to living and proclaiming the Catholic faith will challenge and inspire those who hear him. Come to the Sunday 5 o'clock Mass and stay for pizza in the parish center, followed by the first night of the mission at 6.30 p.m. There are opportunities for adoration and reconciliation during Holy Week, along with services on Holy Thursday until Easter Sunday. Please check the parish website or the bulletin. Please continue to pray for the 15 RCIA candidates that will be welcomed into our Catholic faith at the Easter Vigil on Saturday evening. Father Tom is taking a tour to Italy July 19th through the 28th, 2022, and there are 10 spots left. Join him exploring Orvieto, uh, Assisi, Florence, and Rome. This package includes a private tour of the Vatican. Find more information on the parish website under the News and Events tab. If you choose to receive communion on the tongue, please go to the baptismal font and the priest will come to you. Thank you. The readings for Palm Sunday Cycle C begin on page 100 in the Maroon Missal in the pews. We will now pray for vocations, which can be found at the inside cover of the Maroon Missals. Jesus, you are the good shepherd. You know each of us, and you call us by name to serve the faith. Help us respond generously to your voice. Give courage and guidance to those you call to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, single life, and sacramental marriage, so they may respond wholeheartedly and serve devotedly. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Join us in the Narnex, everyone. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem, Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem as he drew near to Bethany and Bethlehem. At the place called Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? You will answer, the master has need of it. So those who have been sent off went, and they found everything just as he has told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying this colt? They answered, the master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, you rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. I invite uh, to pass out the palms now. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I might hear, and I have not rebelled. I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets or spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. 
Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every name knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death. of this God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table with the apostles. I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and gave thanks. Take this and share it among yourselves, for I tell you that from this time on I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they begun to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom." And you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has de demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny me three times. You will deny three times that you know me. When I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? <laughs> but now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack. And one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, 
he was counted among the wicked. And indeed, what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. And then they said, It is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who came for him, Have you come out as against a robber? with swords and clubs. Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was followed at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, he looked intently at him and said, But he denied it. Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted. My friend, I do not know what you're talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him. And they reviled him in saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If, you are the Christ, tell us. if I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man deceiving our people. We have those who made him fast to Caesar, and made him king Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see the, him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. 
Herod and his soldier, soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him. And after clothing him in re, resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies former, formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people. You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then released him. But altogether they shouted out, Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cy Cyrian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd, of, large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and laminated him. Jesus turned to them. Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him. Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crime. But this man has done nothing criminal. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land, until three in the afternoon, because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God. This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph who 
though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Armithia and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Welcome to the holiest of weeks. This is the holiest week of the entire year as we prepare to enter more fully into the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And a week from today and just a few hours more after that, we will begin the Easter Vigil and uh, we'll begin this great rebirth uh, in the world as our Lord conquers sin and death and is raised again to life. It's a beautiful moment. It's one of the highest feasts. In fact, that particular celebration is called the Mother of All the Liturgies because every other mass and every other liturgy flows from it. It's a time of great rejoicing. And yet, here we are a week from there. And in our human frailty and our human weakness, we sometimes want to jump over everything and go straight to the rejoicing. So sometimes we want to fast forward through this week and get to Easter, and I get that. But we do, to, we do that to our own detriment. Because this week prepares our hearts to receive more fully the great gift that is given at Easter. So we have this season, right, uh, this season of Lent that will end just in time for us to begin the sacred triduum. We have this last little week to prepare our hearts to receive more fully, and we're given one of the greatest gifts we could receive, an opportunity to participate in the saving act of Jesus. And that saving act necessarily ends on Calvary. So this week, we walk the Via Dolorosa, this week, we walk the way of sorrows, which isn't always maybe the most fun thing to do, but it is an extremely powerful thing to do. We get to enter into the passion with Jesus. We get to walk with him on this way. And we walk with Mary, and we walk with John, and we walk with the holy women, and with Veronica, and we offer ourselves as they did those little bits of respite for our Lord as he goes to offer himself entirely for us. So this week, let's pay attention to those around us. Let's pay attention to the Christ in our midst. Let's pay attention to the way in which Jesus is working in our hearts and the way in which he is inviting us to be more fully gift, as St. John Paul II would invite us to be. In fact, what he says we are in our essence. Let's walk with Jesus this way of sorrows so that a week from today we can rejoice with him as he defeats sin and death, dispels darkness, and opens up the way to our eternal home. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Our king has entered his city. Our palms and cries of homage fade away as the words of the gospel tell the story of his suffering and death. Let us bring our prayers to the Father through the Son he gave up for us with love beyond our comprehension. For the church all around the world following the Savior during Holy Week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peoples of all nations who seek peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer mental, physical, and spiritual anguish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who will enter the church on the Easter Vigil, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community of St. Patrick, celebrating this Holy Week with renewed faith and hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gentle repose of the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord and Father, with serene courage, your Son went forth to die for us. Grant us a share in his strength as we bring these prayers before you and ask that you grant them in accordance with your holy will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus the Lord is found in your blue book at 411, number 411 in the blue book, Jesus the Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of the church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand. So that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek. The holy sacrifice of Father Abraham. In our prayer, we ask the Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angels, your altar on high, and your sons and your daughters in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, your only Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God is found in your blue book at 153, 153 in the blue book.
Number 369 in your blue book, 369, Beautiful is Your Love. Also in 422 of the red, 422 in the red.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Jesus, remember me is found in your blue book at 416-416 in the blue book.